Hey guys, welcome back to Let's Play Football Manager 2016, and this is AC Milan, and we're in the Champions League. First knockout round is going to be against Zenit, so uh, if you've watched the previous uh, video, you'll know that we um, got Drew against Zenit, and I'm very happy to report that we're actually 2-0 up. It's very good indeed. We'll go over a few uh, games and things now. Uh, we uh, last saw each other, I think it was the Juventus game where we lost 1-0. Uh, this was another one, again where we seem to just, it, it, it could go either way on the night, and for some reason on the live commentaries, it just doesn't go my way. <laughs> it's um, <clears throat> very frustrating, but there you go. And then I think we really started to hit a really bad place, and I was starting to get a bit concerned. You know, if we look at, yes, okay, we won Catania 5-0 here, but, you know, overall, we, we were not winning the main big games. I mean, the, the Lazio draw, I guess, was the, with the exemption there, but... Sampdoria, this was an absolute nightmare of a game. We were so poor. Um, I think 2-0, obviously, if you look at the times in which they scored, 92nd minute is a little bit flattering to them. We probably should have at least had, um, I was going to say a point, but of course it's a cup game, so you can't get a point. Um, but, you know, it should have at least been a draw. Um, I think if you look here, what you might notice um, we do have a lot of players back, but I was on... Um, oh, what's the word? I was on, like, a more direct play, I think, so... You know, we, we got a lot of players back, ready to counter, uh, sort of in a direct motion, if you know what I mean. Um, unfortunately, that didn't happen and they scored. So, um, slightly, slightly flattering, but that was a really bad place. And they had, you know, like some Murillo and Stones. The defence, that, that's what happens when a defence genuinely lets you down. That never really happened, per se, here. Um, this was more what happens when the strikers let you down. This was when the defenders do it. So, <laughs> but we've managed to turn things around. And the way I did that was a tweak of the formation, a tweak of the tactics, and also something I, I should totally practice what I used to preach, and that was a lot of people would say to me, I've got an outform striker, how do I get him back in form? Because there's no real obvious way of doing it. Um, and it's it's a big conundrum, especially when you're downbeat and you're not quite sure what to do. Um, but one thing I used to say was, which I've tweaked now, which was... Um, Get a get a friendly, you know. When, whenever there's an international break or a gap in your fixture list, get a friendly against some really crap rundown team, you know, in like the sixth tier if you can, and just play all your main players who are out of form, and just get like I played Manier, for example, as you'll see in a minute. I played Manier in the reserves. You don't actually have to create a friendly. I don't know why I didn't think of this sooner. Um, just put them in the reserves, and he will more than likely not score. Uh, obviously, if he doesn't, just stick him in the reserves until he does score, and then hopefully that should be the catalyst then for him to turn it around. Uh, he didn't score here, because he's not playing, uh, but I think it was around here that I realised, okay, seriously, I need to do something here. Look at this. The partnerships I had just simply were not working. Yes, John Stones got us out of jail with this game, as you can see. So, look at that. I mean, actually, I'm asking you to look at the goal and the stats. Um, but, yeah, it was a... It was a Pretty lucky goal, to be honest, in that it happens within the first 90 seconds. But if you look at the stats here, that yes, they never had any clear-cut chances, but they beat us in possession, they beat us on sh with shots. And we kind of got away with this one. This is what happens when you play a team who are generally, you know, they're, they're, not, they're lacking in a bit of quality. So I think we've got a bit of a look there. And as well with Barry, but this, at this point now, I had given Manier a run in the reserves, and he part finally popped up with a goal. And again, you could say, again, we got away with this. But this was more of a natural goal scorer's goal. You know, the John Stones one, obviously, a defender getting forward from a free kick. Um, but what a ball that is from Blazikowski and Manier. Well, he couldn't miss. You know, it doesn't matter how out of form you are. You are not missing that. Of course, unless you're Christian Benteke. Um, then we have Frosinone. Now, this was where I knew, finally, it clicked. We've got it. A little bit lucky again, and yes, they take they, they took the lead, but after the game, I realised, yes, we finally have something here. Look at the more offensive players up, up at the top there, getting much better average ratings this time around. Yes, as I say, they took the lead here through a very nice goal, I must admit. Um, the defending was a little bit terrible, <laughs> to put it bluntly. It wasn't very good, um, but it was early on in the game, and as you can see, we grew into it. The shots, the uh, stats there are getting a little bit higher the off tar on, on and off target. I'm trying to bring that down slowly. There is, I know there is a reason why um, we're having so many off targets. I just can't think of what it is. And I, I know someone has told me, and I just totally forgot what it is. Um, but yeah, as you can see, they, they dominated for sort of the first 10 minutes or so, and then we just needed that one little 
breakaway as you can see we got here. And a lovely finish. By the way, that's an overhead kick from Mineer. <laughs> so, you know, just a couple of goals and bang, he's scoring them overhead kicks. What can you say? Um, and then a bit fortunate with an own goal there, although I think Mania was going to put that in himself anyway. And then Jeremy Menez scoring a penalty. He really is so good from the spot. Uh, and then a nil-nil against Napoli. Not the best result in the world. Mania, the, and again, it's like... <sighs> 6.1, you know, you're just so confused. Like, I was waiting for him to score, but he just didn't turn up this game. I don't know, just put it down to experience. Um, but then, 2 0 against Zenith, and this was a two away goal as well. So, I was very, very happy with this. Menez and Stones with the goals. And as you can see, everyone played pre pretty well for the most part. Uh, this was a pretty strong team. Uh, Blazikowski now coming back into the team. Uh, you know, he's doing pretty well. But a lovely uh, little link up play there between the, the two strikers. It didn't come off, but it was still very nice. And uh, as you'll see the goal now coming up in a second. Pastore is having so much good fortune down this left-hand side. And yeah, it's De Siglio getting forward there. He is the sort of standing captain. I think he's the, officially the third captain, but because De Jong's not playing much anymore, um, he isn't um, He isn't really the vice-captain. It's essentially De Siglio now. I am put, uh, punting for Donnarumma to be the captain soon. He just needs to work on his leadership attributes. So I'll just break away from the fixtures whilst I'm talking about it. A few people have asked as well on Football Manager forums and so on. I'll just see, just in case you don't know, what are the best attributes to look for when you want a captain? I might have addressed this before, but new people come to the channel all the time, so I'll say it now anyway, uh, just in case you need to know. Um, the main one is obviously leadership, which he is improving in. He is only 20 years old. It is exceptionally rare that you're going to find. You will find some, but it's, as I say, it's rare. Um young plays with high leadership determination is always pretty good as well if it's you know around 14 15 or above then you've done pretty well um obviously as we have to look at their me i guess it's media description but i think it would also be their personality uh so i'm just trying to think where it is i'm not sure if it's in fmt actually oh there it is yeah personality sorry i couldn't think resolute resolute's a pretty good one obviously the, the obvious one is um natural leader or just leader I think Cristiano Ronaldo is a natural leader. He might be a good. A better example, obviously, I'm just trying to think of some good ones. Um, who, because obviously you've had a lot of people retire now, <laughs> who are natural leaders. Uh, let's see here. Just check Manchester United. Bastian Schweinsteiger. He might be a good one for this. Like lighthearted, not. I mean that one can go either way. I'm trying to think of more experienced players. David de Gea might be a good one for this. No, he's also lighthearted. That's quite rare. You don't see too many lighthearted players. Wayne Rooney may or may not be. He's ambitious. Ambitious is a great one. Um, but you get an idea. Uh, you get the idea of where I'm coming from with that. So um, it's as a very unlikely that you're going to find someone like a goalkeeper or, a, or just a young player in general who are going to have really high leadership uh, stats. But they're the main three to look at. If, if, if you've got a good one in all three, then you know, you're know you on the right track here. Uh, it's just leadership, determination. I think that there's, there's a few other things as well. Bravery is a good one. Um, I think also as well. I think one I should have mentioned how liked they are within the team. You know, if if you have say, say going to someone else's profile, say going to Mori for example, thinks Pastore is a good player. If that is you know the player you want to be captain, then great. And this is why Maori I'm thinking should be one. I think if I go to Calabria or Zabate, obviously he's the captain. That's 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 a that's an obvious one. Yang Gabate, see, sorry, I mean my captain is Abate. They all think he's a good player. So you know what I mean. They have that dressing room impact. Anyway, just a little side note there on that. Um, we played Perugia, and again, Mania scoring in the 35th minute. Probably should have won this, as you can see. Our luck finally ran out of these uh, little scrappy 1-0s, as uh, they did equalise in the 87th minute. Although, I must admit, they deserved it far much more than any other teams have played. And really nice work from the Yang, who I will be keeping hold of now. He's done enough for me to suggest that um, he should stay on. Mania again scoring and Fabinho scoring, I think, a penalty for some reason. I don't know why he was on pens, but <laughs> there you go. He uh, seems to do well. You may also notice a new name in the midfield there, Alessandro Ferri. Um, he is a youngster who's actually on a youth contract still. I've not given him a permanent contract yet, but um, I noticed in my reserve reports, the reserve team's reports, when he was coming through, he would constantly be the standout. He would, oh, I would see his name all the time coming through, and it'd say, oh, Ferry was the standout player. He had a good game. He banged in the goal. He gave two assists. He did this. He did that. So I was 
like, well, I've got to give him a chance. I've got to give him a shot. It's, it would be horrifically unfair of me to uh, not give him a shot. And to, be, to his credit, he's not done too badly. Seven rating there, a 7.1 there, a 6.9. You know, he hasn't done badly. I mean, he hasn't done particularly great either, but um, he's done enough for me to suggest that I, again, keep him around like Niang. He's useful to have. I know we have players who can play midfield. I know I have Blind. I know I have uh, Mari. I know I have uh, Mangala if need be. Poyet. Um, De Jong, incidentally, is going to be leaving at the end of the season. So that's the vice captain out. Uh, as you can see, we're playing Calgary here. Uh, this was 2 1. I'll just show you these goals now. Nice uh, little finish from Bakada, who sort of. He gets a bit of form and then just loses it instantly. <laughs> it's very strange how Carlos Bakker is working at the moment. I'm not quite sure, but as you can see, Ferry looks fine in midfield. He's only 19, I think. Um, very fortunate that I'm not quite sure what happened to Mini. I don't know if he just got sort of shoved off the ball by De Fabro and then all of a sudden he uh, he managed to you know get in there, get in there after a terrible back pass. But as you can see, Rasmus Falk, whose name for some reason jumps out at me. I don't know why. Um, he scored a lovely goal and we did hang on here. We got very fortunate, I'll admit. Um, there you go, it was a pretty good game. So we're still not all there, but we could be getting to the Champions League quarterfinals. Now, I'm going to go through here. Arsenal are playing the champions, I think. Marseille, yes, Marseille indeed are the champions. Uh, you may notice that everyone's fitness is not as good as it usually is. That is, again, because I switched. This is why when you start your game, especially if it's FMT, but actually not even FMT, just generally, your focus be fitness unless you're at a really low level like you know if you're in one of the downloaded super low level databases then you, know, you can you'll have to tweak, tweak it to what whatever your team is bad at um but i almost always say just get on the fitness then that's another thing you don't have to worry about most of the time unless you really really push it your players fitness levels are going to be okay naturally at this level anyway their natural fitness fitness is going to be okay um i mean if we just look at Mania for example let's just click on random player uh, natural fitness 12 it's not bad um but it's more than you know if, if you combine it with the the training focus that's going to be more than enough so i wouldn't worry about that now this is the team i have here i've given a promise to christian benteke who has scored only one goal which is a massive step down from last year I and mean, i think he banged 15 goals in last year um which is what menes is on now so you know as you can see his form isn't great but i've made a promise to him i've got to keep that um you may also notice whilst I'm on it again, Nigel De Jong, I've made the promise here. Um, he said, looking forward to. Oh, really? Oh, I thought I said to him he'll be leaving at the end of the season. Oh, okay, he's 34 now. He accumulates so many yellow cards, it's unbelievable. And Fabinho and Blind um, play, and Poyet play a much better play. He is, they're, just, they're just so much better than him. <laughs> Dan is like, don't accumulate that many. Uh, Cards and I think his wages are quite high as well. Just check it. Yeah, Fifty out fifty thousand, not too bad. It's two percent of the wage builder. So this is the team. Um, we're going to play. In fact, no, I'm going to swap Old Sheik for Calabria. I'm going to put the captain in. It's bizarre, really, that Abate just has. I mean, I, I, I know I've. A lot of people criticise me saying you just go on what the assistant says. Quick pick. Um, the reason for that was because. Initially, uh, it's been fixed now on 16.2, but initially on FMT, I found the unless obviously my settings were all over the place, I found the sort of menus here to be completely broken. Like I couldn't actually do anything with it. It seems to be fine now, but it wasn't, it was a real chore to just select players. And that sounds silly, but it really was that broken. And that's why, I, you know, like I could fiddle with it a little bit, but if you wanted to do anything, you know, more than that, it, it'd be a real chore, so that's why I did that. Now I'm a bit more um, aware, aware of what I'm doing. I just noticed as well, Marillo is not. So we're going to play. Stones is injured, incidentally. But as a patter, I just can't find a place for him in the team. So we're going to play Blind. I think Zapata is also going to be leaving at the end of the season. He too. Oh, he's only 32. I thought he was about older than that. Hmm, okay. Uh, but yeah, we've got plenty. I think I'll probably bring in one more centre back uh, to replace him, and I think we'll be happy. Uh, with where we are so yeah let's give it a go let's see where we end up so obviously we have that two goal lead now i am expecting zenit to come out running just hit the hit the ground running and just thrashes in the first 15 minutes you know they're going to be actually going for it and considering how 
football manager works. Now, I spoke, I think, maybe in a previous video or two videos before, about how when you get to, to a, a um, two-legged game, the team who are losing all of a sudden just gain incredible force of will and just defy all odds and start absolutely banging the goals in like crazy. So just be aware. Just notice Red Bull Salzburg have a joint top goal score. Are they in the Champions League? No, they're not. Why are they there? I take it they were... Oh, I see. They've gone through a lot of qualifiers. Of course, they have. Fair enough. Right, I'll start the match. I've waffled on for way too long. <laughs> so I am expecting it. In fact, so with that in mind, I am going to go to counter just for a little while at the very least, just to see how we do. So I am expecting a lot of pressure early on from Zenith. Having done it myself, as I say, on FM 12, 13, it was just constantly, you know, you, you'd get into the second leg. You'd, you'd lose... Not by much, but you'd lose the away leg. And you'd bring them home, and you'd smash them. And it was just the same story every time. I was like, I remember doing the videos thinking, people are going to call me out and say, this is fake, what are you doing? You're rigging the results or something, you know, something like that. But no, that was the honest to God truth. That was what would happen. I don't know if it was just... I mean, I've talked before about maybe home advantage being perhaps a bit too too much on Football Manager. Perhaps, you know, it's, it's, it, it's too weighted towards uh, the home team whether that's true or not I can't say I don't know the ins and outs of the game as much as you know say a developer you know someone like Jack who worked the space he might be able to um, tell me more about that I might have to ask him about it maybe um, but it's I think it's an interesting thing to think about whether that home advantage is a is overpowered or not because I have seen people talk about it on forums so it's definitely something people are aware of but at the minute I'm just being perhaps a, I'm, I'm just being cautious at the minute. I don't want to go overboard. And, you know, you don't need to finish this game off now. You know, we just need to make sure we don't concede, and that's exactly what we're going to do if we don't get our ideas up together. I think it's because I am playing. Oh no, I'm not playing the offside trap. Let's get that on there. I like how if I gone in there, I probably would have just switched that off instead because we're not playing it. I've just switched it on. <laughs> that's how fickle I am when it comes to tactics, and. Um, Pronichev here is down in the centre circle. So, no, so he's injured. Come on, pressure, that's good from Mari. Didn't win it back in his shot off. Probably one of their standout players alongside Hulk. God, Jose Mari has been so good at that. Just picks the ball up. He's, he's honestly one of the best box to box midfielders I've had, and I've only had him for like a couple of years. But he's so good at that. Here's Benteke. Can see why he scored only one goal this season, can't you? It's weird, actually, how we're dominating, or well, not dominating, but we'll certainly have more possession than them, because I'm just so used to that not happening. Once again, the front two, not really doing it, and Ben Teke, you see, this is the problem with FMT, where, you know, he can play really badly, he can just have this run of poor games, or oh, in Calabria goes close, um, and obviously... You know, he could play three or four games and I'd be like, okay, this clearly isn't working, he's not scoring. So I drop him, and then he comes to me and says, why aren't you giving me games? And it's like, there's no option there to say, mate, you haven't scored. Your performances have been subpar. You can't say that. The only thing you can say is um, you, your performances haven't been good enough, and every time, it's not like a case of it's, oh, 99 times out of 100. No, it's 100 times out of 100. They're going to come back and say, well, I don't think that solves anything. Like a pouty child. And you're just like, well, what, what's, what's the point of this? What, what, what is the benefit? What fun am I having? <laughs> you know, it's a video game after all. And that's the excuse I always use for not playing lower level games. It's a good block from Mangala. Um, you know, it's, it's a video game at the end of the day, and it's meant to be fun. And I don't really find playing outside of the championship, you know, sort of level two, so we say, level two leagues, um, to be all that fun. You know, not only is it not fun for me, it's not entertaining for you, and it might be, but it'll get boring <laughs> quite quickly. Uh, and, yeah, so that, that's why. Because so I just I just try to, just uh, prior to playing this and loading the save up, I've just downloaded a level, believe it or not, a English League level 23. Now, I think that includes 
the absolutely lowest level. I mean, that, that is quite literally Sunday League. <laughs> there are, in fact, some university teams in there. I think I saw Loughborough University, for example, in uh, one of the divisions. And um, I tried to go a team that I've always wanted to try and do, but I didn't realise how low they were. Um, and that is Cadbury Athletic. Yes, that is the, genuinely the team of the Chocolatiers. <laughs> And uh, oh, Mangala's hit the post. I don't believe it. And they played in the East Midlands Division One County League or something. And obviously, you have to you know make sure that you use fake players and staff because you know the game can't generate that uh, that low down. I mean, it can, but it, it it'll they'll all be grayed out and stuff. So you want they're not non-usable players basically. Here's Mania, and again hit the woodwork. I'm going to take Benteke off because he's been poor, not really doing anything, so I'm going to bring on Niang. Don't need to risk uh, Menes for now. He will attack. Um, and it was really fun, but, well, it, it's, th oh, sorry, theoretically it should be really fun, but I played it. I played one competitive game, and there were three highlights. There was one was a shot for them, one was in the 90th minute, a shot for us, and the other was a yellow card to them. They had two shots the whole game, we had four. It was absolutely appalling. It really was the most painful watch of my football manager playing career. It really was appalling. And um, I did, it just wasn't fun. I just really didn't find fun. But I do like the novelty of going Cadbury Athletic. You know, I, I'd like to do a YouTube save of it, but as I say, I just can't play that low down. Um, but if, if you want to download that database and you know bring someone from, I think, I think the lowest possible league you can go is like... I think there's a league in Sussex which goes all the way down to Division 10 and I think that is the uh, lowest possible league you can play in where you can theoretically I mean it's, the odds are thousands if not millions to one but where you can theoretically climb the leagues and get to the Premier League it will never happen obviously or, you know, the chances of it happening are incredibly incredibly high um, but it, it's very funny if you want to download it um, there will either be a link in the description if or if I've forgotten uh, go to FM Scout and go to the database download section. Should be in there. Just make sure you rank it by uh, either downloads or views, and I believe it should be in there. Um, I think, yeah, I think it's on FM Scout, and they have scored with ten minutes to go. Can you see what I mean? So if, now, if they score again, that does mean um, we will go to extra time. I'm just going that back here, let's get rid of that. Come on, just a tad. We're going to also bring on another defender in a moment. It's going to take Manier off. Just want to play a little bit safer now. Daily Blind, he's not really playing great. He's not been great as a centre back. I mean, I know Mangala hasn't been great either, but hmm, don't really have. Marillo's there, but he isn't. Um... Oh, that's a pain. So if I put him, in fact, I've got a better idea. Let's try this. I think I've just totally cocked that one up there. So I don't know why. I, I think I must have clicked the wrong player. Uh, in fact, I've got an, also an idea. Let's put Blin there, where he can probably be best put put to better use. As uh, just happened as a defensive midfielder, yeah. and then Fabinho comes in to defend. And I think we can make one more sub. Yeah, let's try that. Got Niang up there, obviously, if we have a breakaway or anything. But 10 minutes to go. Hopefully, we can see this one out. Because it was, it was quite a nonchalant game up until then. And it does look as if we're doing that. One minute by the time. What is going on with the added time on this game? <laughs> I mean, two subs, one minute. I, I take it they haven't made any subs then. Because, in case you don't know, substitutions mean 30 seconds of added time. Roughly. Have they not made any? They must not have made any. And we're over that limit now. Come on, ref. I know we're going to lose on the night, but it doesn't matter. You know, the the the, the idea is uh, it's a bit different to just a one-off game. So there we go. We go through one nil defeat, which isn't another bloody live commentary defeat. But then again, it's uh, it is doesn't really matter. Goal is Benteke. It's like look, eleven hours of football. And you know he still and he thinks I'm treating him unfairly, and it's like, well, get your ass together. It's unbelievable. Anyway, so the first leg was enough, really. Um, I mean, as you can see, we never really got out of um, 
uh, second gear. And I played in a more defense-minded situation. I know it's another defeat on the ninth, but we still got through and that's all that matters, don't care. State of mind is a little bit different in this case. So um, we go through to the quarterfinals. Now I think last year we got through to the quarterfinals as well. Uh, oh, I hasn't decided to load that one for some reason. Let's try again. Oh, did we not? Oh, sorry, yes. Uh, we lost on away goals to Galatasaray. We did. That's right, it was a huge shock. I remember it. I was absolutely gutted by that. Because <laughs> really, we should have. But uh, that's right, yeah, I completely remember now. If we look at last season, we go to the quarter final. In fact, the semi finals, Galatasaray. Come on, try again. Ugh, the way it does this. So we find, as you can see, yeah, Galatasaray got to, got there and actually got a nil-nil draw at the Benabar. I know it was 4-1, but um, I thought that was quite good. Yeah, they got to the semi, so fair play to him. Right, so we're through. Not the best performance in the world, but we're getting there slowly and steadily, and that's all that matters really, that we did indeed get to the quarters. So thank you very much for watching. hope you enjoyed my little uh, talk about uh, many different things throughout this uh, video. If you did, please leave a like, and uh, I'll be back with, hmm, don't know what game. Maybe we'll do one in the middle to the end of April. We'll see where we are from there. Thanks for watching. Goodbye.